we're at the end of 7th Street now, and this is Griswold Street that uh, we're looking at head that goes across. Before we get onto Griswold Street and go down that street, uh, let's look at the southwest corner of Griswold and 7th. Uh, right about where this house is today. At one time, there was a city services gas station here, but in 1949, there was actually a Sunoco station uh, owned by Ernest Warner. And the reason I know this, there was a bad accident on this corner. The Greyhound bus collided with an automobile that put the Greyhound bus through the front window of the gas station and put the automobile into a tree killed one lady and injured four other ones. As we go west down Crystal Street, there's not much in this uh, block I really want to look at, except uh, until we get to the end of the block on the north side. I'd like to look at this building right here. But hey, this building houses the Port of Hopes, which is a mental health service. But at one time, one of the most successful business in Port Huron was located at this building, and that was Gruel and Ott Bottling Company. You can see the building hasn't changed much at all. Of course, the means of transportation has changed. At the time of this photograph, uh, both horses and motor vehicles are being used, which would have been the first part of the 1900s. The business was owned by Charles Gruhl and Reinhard Ott. Both were immigrants from Germany. Mr. Gruhl's home was on one side of the bottling plant and Mr. Ott's home was on the other side of the bottling plant. So they didn't have far to go to work. In 1884, Mr. Gruhl came to Port Sharon to accept a position as a driver for Gottlet Andre. Uh, Mr. Andre had a bottling company on Huron Avenue he continued there until 1894, at which time with his partner, Mr. Ott, he purchased the business and moved it over onto 7th Street. This firm manufactured all kinds of soft drink, many different flavors. It employed about eight men and, and supplied the wholesale and retail trade in families in St. Clair, Sanilac, Huron, Lapeer, and part of Macomb and Tuscola counties as well. And you can see by this photograph of the wagon, you can see the words Mount Clemens on it. So, so they served a much bigger area than just the Port Huron area. I found this copy of a label uh, for bottling uh, at uh, Gruel and Ott, and it's for the birch beer flavor, which is probably the most unusual flavor that they had there. This wasn't really a beer, this was actually a soda. It had a distinctively minty flavor, and it had another sharp flavor that was from the birch. They would use the birch bark or the birch sap uh, to make this soda. So it wasn't just this area or this bottling company that had it. It was uh, pretty much nationwide. Uh, here's one that they have from Pennsylvania. Another popular flavor was their ginger ale. Here is how their ginger ale was described in a Times Herald uh, newspaper ad. Better ginger ale made here. Ruinot Company makes delicious ginger ale made from pure Jamaica ginger, sparkling and delightful, with that pungent tang that satisfies thirst and desire. That is what Ruinot are offering to the thirsty in Port Huron and to those who are particular about their ginger ale. Ginger ale for any occasion is manufactured by Gruel and Ott, whose pure products are known all over Port Huron and the Thumb District. Both golden ginger ale and dry ginger ale are made in the modern sanitary plant of Gruel and Ott, who takes pride in their product. I found this ad in a, a 1927 a copy of the Times Herald, and it says this. Ask for Orange Crush in the crinkly bottles. Now, I drank this as a boy. I loved it. It was my favorite soda. But I never knew how to quite describe the bottle. But crinkly is a good word because it had horizontal ridges all the way uh, down the bottle. And uh, it felt like it gave you a real good grip on the bottle. But it, and it tasted really good, too. Don't know if it tastes as good as this ad makes out, but it, it was good. 
So here's what it says. Grill and hot soft drinks are in great demand. These drinks, especially the well-known Orange Crush, are greatly appreciated on such occasions. The company especially recommends the Orange Crush, which is made from pure, unadulterated orange juice. It is considered one of the most healthful soft drinks. All of the nationally known carbonated beverages are bottled by Gruel and Hots. In connection with drinks of this kind, the company takes this opportunity of giving the public the expert opinion of Dr. Irving S. Larksdale, Commissioner of Health of Greenville, South Carolina, who declares that bottled carbonated beverages are an important factor in promoting public health. He says they serve a most useful purpose in supplying sufficient fluid nourishment to persons who do not drink enough water and that they serve to reduce the body temperature during summer months. Every call upon us is responded to with personal service, not delegated to a subordinate. And here it is, Orange Crush and the Crinky Bottle. These are really hard to find. Uh, whenever I go into an antique store, I see all kinds of soda bottles, but uh, this one I've never seen. I was lucky to find a picture of it, actually. Some of Gruenot's early bottles looked like this, and then some looked like this, where it had the trademark right on the outside of the bottle. Quite a distinctive trademark. If you look closely at it, you can see the G goes horizontally, and uh, it goes over the O, which is going vertically. Crew and not mixed, bottled, capped, and delivered their own soda. Well, they say soda down south. We say pop up here. On January 27, 1906, they started bottling Coca-Cola. The business, later known as Port Huron Coca-Cola Bottling Company, was sold May 26, 1947. Another bit of our history, gone. But the building, it's still there. All right, I guess that's as far as I want to go on Grizzle Street right now. We'll come back to Grizzle uh, in a later video. But right now I want to go back uh, the other end of 7th Street on the corner of 7th and Lapeer. This is where Water Street ends and Lapeer begins. You can see the 7th Street Bridge on the right-hand side or the beginning of it. Then you see that grassy knoll uh, over there on the uh, northwest corner. Today, Water Street ends here and picks up again on the other side of 10th. But at one time, Water Street just continued on going from 7th Street that went off on an angle and the pier went straight. Water Street went off on that angle right about where that grassy knoll is. This satellite view here, the red arrow designates where you can pick up Water Street again there at 10th Street. In this satellite view, uh, I put that gray line in there so you can see where Water Street uh, was at one time and it connected with uh, Water Street just beyond 10th as well. In this early postcard, you can see Water Street going off to the right there, which left a, a V. Uh, not a lot of property on that V, but there was enough to build a hotel, and that was the Loth Hotel. But because of the V and the lack of property, it couldn't build a hotel like so many, either rectangle or square. It had to be a triangle. The hotel was built in 1902 by Christian Loth to resemble the famed Flatiron Building in New York City. Of course, to resemble this building, you'd have to reduce the top 20 floors. But the original shape is very similar, a triangle. I really like this photograph here. You can see the hotel, of course. But you can see the streetcar that's on its way to South Park. And on the left, uh, on the corner of uh, 7th and uh, Lapeer, you can see the Metropolitan Hotel. So there was a little competition pretty close just across the street. 
The hotel is designed to be a more economical alternative to the Harrington and the Union hotels, which were more money and, and a little nicer. They catered to visiting businessmen and traveling salesmen. And I think the Metropole Hotel, just across the street, was very similar as well in price and accommodations, although they did have a bowling alley. I've always enjoyed this photograph as well. And this uh, this picture here would have been taken shortly after the hotel was built. You can see that it, uh, the roads weren't encumbered by automobiles yet. Everything you see is horse-drawn carriages or wagons. It gives you a real flavor for what it was like back in those days. As we zoom in on the hotel, we can see the signage over the door that says loft. And then as we, we go up to the, on the top, we see the, the signage that says hotel. But above that, there's more signage and it's very difficult to see because it kind of blends in with the sky. But it says hotel loft. I believe that sign was lit at night. Here is a postcard that was made from the photograph that we've been looking at. Here's a photograph of the hotel taken years later. And you can see the loft uh, signage over the door is gone. The hotel on top of the roof is gone. And the, uh, the hotel loft that was uh, sitting even higher than that is gone now. The only signage we can see now is Loth Bar. In the next couple of pictures, you can get a pretty good idea what this hotel looked like overall. On a side view, it looks very, very narrow because you can't see from that view that it's a triangle. The same would go with this side. This would be the Lapeer Street side, or the Lapeer Avenue side, I should say. This photograph gives you a real good idea of how the water street went off uh, to the right and Lapeer went straight. This photograph would have been taken probably shortly before it was torn down. The hotel over the years was dilapidated and need of repair. It was no longer really the Loft Hotel. If we zoom in here, I think you can see that it's now uh, Speedy Print and a couple other businesses that were in it as well. The building was purchased by the city of Port Huron uh, for urban renewal that swept the city and was torn down. It was demolished. Today that area is occupied by condos, very nice condos, and I think a vast improvement over a demolished building in a, a neighborhood that was running down. But if we compare it to when this building was in its heyday, that's another story. You can see that uh, sitting directly behind the Loth Hotel was the OK Laundry. The front of it was on Lapeer Avenue and the back of it was on Water Street. We have a great picture of this business right here. So let's take a minute to examine it. As we zoom in on this window here, you can see which looks like rollers behind the window. And uh, these appear to be uh, iron press mangoes. Back in the day, many families had a mango in their home, including ours. OKL, OK Laundry, built in 1907. If you're interested in what was on that triangle before the Loth Hotel, check out video number 128. All right, join me in my next video and we'll see what else there is in the area that we want to take a look at.